This is geometry, we're unit two. We're talking about line and rotational symmetry. Line symmetry, otherwise known as axis of symmetry, is any line that divides a figure into two parts. Okay, it can divide it even more than two parts, two or more parts. Each has a mirror image of the other. So what we're looking at is this rectangle. You got to recognize that this is not a square. Okay? So, we've got a little demonstration that we can do with a rectangle. Okay? A rectangle, you could fold it in hamburger style, and the vertices match up, the sides match up exactly all the way around. So that is considered a line of reflection. You could fold this so that it's hot dog style, the long way. The vertices match up, the sides match up. So that's another line of reflection. So we have a line of reflection that goes this way, and we have a line of reflection that goes that way for a rectangle. Now, some people think there might be a diagonal one, but if you notice, if you try to set up the diagonal, ver vertice to vertice, the side doesn't match up also. If you force the side to match up, the vertice doesn't match up. So it doesn't exist. There's only two two lines of symmetry, one vertical, one horizontal. This is called a pentagon. You go ahead and think about how many lines of symmetry. If you need to pause the video, pause the video. So, of course, I think most of us are all going to recognize we have a line of symmetry going down the center. If you turn your paper, you have another one that's going down the center. And it's easy to see it if you turn your paper, you have another one that goes down the center. They're all converging on the exact same point. So one, two, three, four, five. Five lines of symmetry, two lines of symmetry. How about a heart? That's clearly one line of symmetry. Let's take a look at how we know this. If I look over here, and I'm going to look at this line of symmetry. If you look at the angle that's formed, they have to be the same on both sides of the line of symmetry. The side has to be the same, leaving it. Then I um, made a curve or a corner. Here's another corner. This distance is the same in both cases. These angles are the same. So it's got to be symmetrical all the way down the line of reflection. Here we're curving up. Here we're curving up. That's the line of reflection. Here we're curving down. Here we're curving down. Line of reflection. Okay, we come over here to letter D. You think about D for a moment. Pause the video. Give it a try. Don't sit and copy. It doesn't help. So I think most of us will point out that we have a line of symmetry going vertically. We have one going horizontally. Horizontally. 
here's a good way for us to test if we have a line of symmetry. If we trace our shape on one side of our line of symmetry, will that match up on the exact other side? And there we go. It matched up exactly. For example, over here, if we have our line of symmetry, and we trace out one side, we have to flip it over, because it's a reflection, and there it matched up exactly. Up and down, of course, does not work. We don't have a line this way. because it's not the same above and below. So, another way to look at this is, do we have a line of symmetry this way? Are these distances the same? Are the shapes the same? Well, you can go ahead and you can draw or visualize what it is, and then if you reflect it over your line of symmetry, you see it matches up exactly. That's a line of reflection. Here's another line of reflection. So that gives us four lines of reflection. A butterfly. Well, that's pretty straightforward. We have one line of reflection. How about your snowflake? Let's pause on this one. Pause the video. Give this one a try. See what you think. All right. So what I'm looking at, I have a line of reflection clearly this way. Clearly that way. And that way. So a lot of people might say there are three lines of symmetry but you're also going to have a line of symmetry this way. Be kind of hard to demonstrate with this, but we're, we're forming our bubbles on the way out. Okay, so I have that shape. If I reflect it over, they're matching up on this side. That's matching those bubbles, that's matching those bubbles, and those bubbles, and those bubbles. So we have a line of reflection there, line of reflection here, and line of reflection there. So there are six lines of reflection for this snowflake. Letter G. has one line of reflection. How many lines of reflection do we see for H? Zero. Zero lines of reflection. Some people think, here's kind of another way. If you, if you run your line down your line of symmetry, is the other side exactly that same style. Exactly the same style. And as we open it up, the answer is no. They keep dropping down. There is no line of reflection that's exactly the same in both directions. Okay, so that was one. That was zero. So... Next, we're going to talk about rotational symmetry. It occurs when a figure can be rotated a fraction of a turn so that the resulting figure is the same as the original. All figures can be turned completely around to match themselves. So a full rotation is not considered rotational symmetry. 
a figure has rotational symmetry only if it matches up after a fraction of a turn. A hundred and eighty degrees or less. Okay, so that's going to be a rotational symmetry. 180 degrees. You have to go to 180 degrees if possible. So let's take a look at this one. Think about how we can take our rectangle. Okay, this is just a big rectangle. How can we take our rectangle? How can we turn it and make it the exact same shape? That didn't line up exactly. But that did. I turned it 180 degrees for it to line up. Well, mathematically, that was kind of like ge geometry-wise. Mathematically, this has two lines of symmetry. Listen to this carefully. If you take 360 degrees and you divide this by two lines of symmetry, we get 180 degrees, and that tells us our rotational symmetry. 180 degrees would be a rotational symmetry for every rectangle. A pentagon. We said a pentagon... had five lines of symmetry. If I come in here with the tracing paper and I trace that out, how far do I need to turn this tracing paper so it lands right on top where I was? Okay, that's kind of the question. Well, this has five lines of symmetry. So if we take 360 and divide that by five, five goes into 36 seven times with one left over. Five goes into 10 twice. So 72 is your lines of reflection, or is your rotational symmetry, because you have five lines of reflection. Now. Could we do it a second time? So we had 72. Could we do it a second time and not be more than 180? 72 and 72 is 144. So those would be your two answers. You must have both answers. Any degree value less than 180 that maps it on is considered a rotational symmetry. So it has 72 degree rotational symmetry. It also has 144 degree rotational symmetry. How about the heart? That was 360 divided by one. That's 360. No rotational. Symmetry. Because 360 number is too big. Here's a new shape. Triangle's not new, but we didn't do this one earlier, so it's, it's new for today. I'm considering this to be an equilateral triangle. And when we do that, we see we have three lines of symmetry. So 360 divided by 3 is 120. So it has 120 degree rotational symmetry. So if I rotate it 90 degrees, you see that doesn't quite match up. I have to rotate it more than 90 degrees, which is 120 degrees, and I can match it up. So 120 degree rotational symmetry. 
Now, I believe the intent here is that this side is the same as that side. It's the same as that side. There's your lines of reflection. So we have four lines of reflection. So 360 divided by 4, that comes out to be 90. So if we trace this out, and I'm afraid it's not perfect, so it's not going to look awesome when we do it, but maybe good enough. When we rotate it 90 degrees, you see that we land right back on it. It's a little questionable. I don't think those sides match up exactly, but that's the intent. How about the snowflake? One, two, three, four, five, six. So 360 divided by six is 60 degree rotation, 120 degree rotation, 180 degree rotation. We should have said this one has 180 degree rotation also, I'm sorry. You got to do your angles all the way up to 180. You got to continue your angles all the way to 180. If it doesn't repeat and land on 180, you got to stop. Two, uh, 120 goes to 240 next. That's too far. Only to 180. One line of symmetry is going to have no rotational symmetry. How about an octagon? Pause the video and you decide your rotational symmetry for a regular octagon. So we have a line of symmetry, of course, straight up and down and diagonal right through the straight sides. And we would also have a line of symmetry through the diagonals, through the each vertice. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have eight lines of symmetry. So that's going to be 360 divided by eight. Let's see how we can do this without a calculator. We have 8. It goes into 36. It goes in there four times. That's 32. So there's four left over. 8 goes into 45 times. So there we have our answer. 45 degree rotation, 90 degree rotation, 135 degree rotation, and 180 degree rotation. You always count up to 180 degrees. No, no more, only less. On the flip side, we have a few questions, some review questions we can talk quick about. Transformations from one triangle to the other one. How is this become in that shape? Just using our eyes a little bit. Pretty flat on the bottom. Pretty flat on the bottom. So that's being a 180 degree rotation. A reflection over the x axis. Here it's telling us what shape we're going from. From F to R. From F to R. We don't go that way, we have to go this way. So that's got to be 270 degree rotation. Here I recognize that our letters are switching and we're putting the negative on the right. So it's going to be a 270 degree rotation.
And then this one, A is going from negative 2 to positive 2. And C is going negative 2 to negative 9. So what's different about each of these? We're switching and changing the one on the right. Switching and changing the one on the right. So that's a 90 degree rotation.